Joining me now here on the MA Report is a man that's coming off a first round victory just uh, a w- a, I guess a couple of days ago as we're talking here, Travis, man. Uh, appreciate time. Uh, rear naked choke victory, man. Uh, of course, uh, second fight of 2024 year. For- so obviously your first fight was before we went into what our world is. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so how was it, what was that experience like, uh, of fighting during, you know, our, our current world and, and kind of obviously all, all the, the different things that go into actually, uh, you know, having a fight. Uh, yeah. So it was a bit different as far as like, um, the way, like the weigh-ins and all that stuff went, um, they had us weigh in individually. So we didn't do any like fighter matchups or, you know, like, um, uh, uh, square offs. I mean, with the, with our opponents, um, cause they had people just coming in like one at a time and then leaving. So, uh, that was different. Um, you know, same thing kind of when we did the medical stuff, uh, that, you know, they all had us going in one at a, you know, individually and we had to fill out f- different medical forms saying, you know, that we hadn't been around COVID and we haven't, we don't know anybody that's tested positive in the last 14 days and we had to have our temperatures checked and all that stuff. So, Um, but for the most part, honestly, it wasn't too different. Um, you know, from our end, you know, we're just supposed to show up and get in the cage and fight. So, um, they had a lot of us stay in our hotel room until it was closer to our fights. And then we come out like, I I mean, I was pretty much in there. I had eight of my teammates that were fighting and I only got to see one of them because I stayed in my, (laughs) stayed in my room the whole time, uh, until it was close to my, my fight. So other than that, um, you know, I didn't think it was too bad. I'm, I'm glad they were finally able to get the shows back going in Ohio. Um, and, you know, it's starting to pick up in some of the other states. But, you know, right when uh, Ohio Combat League announced they were going to do their show, um, Pennsylvania shut down or Michigan shut down and Indiana re-shut down all their shows. And I was just like, oh, man, is this thing even going to get to happen? You know, so. Uh, so, yeah, in that aspect, it was a little bit more nerve wracking, just like worrying of whether or not you're actually going to get to fight and cutting all the weight and doing what you're supposed to do. And, and then, you know, not knowing if you're actually going to get to, to make the walk. How do you describe 2020 for, for your professional career? Uh, disappointing, I guess I would say mm-hmm. just because, um, you know, I, I had that title fight back in January and I lost to John Poppy, uh, with a, I got a cut over my eye and the doctor wouldn't let the fight continue. I wanted to continue. Um, I was actually kind of surprised when they stopped it. I was bleeding. A, I mean, it was bleeding a decent amount, but it was over the corner of my eye. So it was running down my side of my face. It wasn't getting into my eye. Um, unfortunately though, the doctor who was on staff that night had never done an MMA event. He'd only done boxing and, um, he thought it was a bad enough cut to stop for like a boxing match. So he, you know, stopped the fight, which really just kind of bothered me. Cause there was only, you know, I think like 45 seconds left in the round. And if I would have finished it out, um, I didn't get to see the scorecards, but, uh, I heard that, you know, the judges had me winning two of the rounds of the three that we fought. So if it would have went the distance, I could have potentially got the W, but you know, it is what it is. Um, you can't really do anything about cuts. And when it happens, it happens. If, uh, obviously I would have preferred to fight on, but so that was uh, disappointing. And then obviously, uh, two months later we're locked down and the gyms are closing and, uh, yeah, that was a bit frustrating. You know, I, I didn't know when I was going to get to fight again. Um, and luckily, uh, we opened back up in like May and then I I've been in the gym ever since training, getting back into shape, working on my cardio. I went and did Pan Ams, uh, one purple belt, uh, gold medal at Pan Ams, um, a couple months ago. So I was trying to find something to stay active at least. And then, uh, you know, this fight was, uh, this fight went well. Uh, so I, I can't be upset about the, this, this fight, but just like, I feel like, you know, I'm 33 years old and I, and I unfortunately just wasted a year of my career with COVID. I mean, you mentioned about how this fight against Marcus went well for you. I mean, your overall assessment, I mean, I'm sure that you're probably more assessing the things that you felt you didn't do well in, in the fight, but yeah. what, what is your overall assessment? Um, I'm all, overall, I mean, I'm happy I got the W, um, especially by submission, finishing the fight, you know, that's my, that's my, uh, seventh first round finish of my career of my nine, my nine wins. You know, I've had seven in the first round and the second or the, the other one was in the second round. Um, so I, I, I love finishing fights. I mean, I'm always looking for the finish. So I was happy about that, but honestly, I was kind of upset. I got taken down, uh, as easily as I did. <laughs> Uh, I, to be honest with you, I didn't think Marcus was going to want to grapple with me. Um, and 
uh, when I landed like three or four really solid leg kicks inside and outside on him. And I think that kind of changed his mind about standing and striking with me. And, uh, you know, he shot in for like a tie up. And then when he got the, we got the, uh, the body lock on me, he hit an inside trip. And I honestly, I, I remember seeing his foot come under and hitting that, that trip. And as I was falling, I was just like, Oh my gosh, did I really just give that up? You know, <laughs> like I, I, I hit that stuff on all the guys in the gym all the time. And I'm just like, I can't believe I just got hit by that. And, uh, so when I got taken down, I immediately pulled butterfly guard and held my position until I tried to, uh, sneak out the back door on him. And when I did, he took my back and suplex me and he went to try to take my back when I hit the ground, but I kind of popped up a little bit. So he went high and then, uh, I just sat out from underneath of him, uh, took his back and it was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> I was el- I was punching him and I had the hip ride and he, we were in my corner and my cornerman goes, he goes, Travis, he's already tired. Look how heavy he's breathing. And, <laughs> and Marcus looks over to my corner and says, I'm not tired. I'm barely even breathing hard. Well, why, why he's doing that, I went ahead and slid the arm underneath of his neck because he had his head up looking at my corner talking. You know, he's talking trash to my corner, and uh, my corner was talking trash to him, and I, I just slid it underneath of his throat, and I was like, well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be, and sunk it in, uh, put my left hook in, and finished the choke. So so kudos to so, your corner for, for talking a little yeah. trash. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, you know, Marcus, I kicked him a couple of times, and he was like, he was kind of started talking trash right off the get go. I kicked him a couple of times and he's like, Oh, I like throwing kicks too. And I was like, okay, <laughs> well maybe, uh, maybe block one. I don't know, bud. <laughs> you know, it, it's you, you, you say something interesting there. Cause I was uh, talking to Parker Porter who just won the UFC two weeks ago. And, and he was talking about how you, you go into a fight with a game plan. You, you know, you, yeah. you, you see things on film and you're like, okay, this is going to be there. That's going to be there. And like you just mentioned, like, you know, Hey, I didn't think he was going to grapple, but you know, things kind of happen to fight. How much would you yeah. say of, I guess in general of your fights is about improv as opposed to actually what the game plan is. I, I think a lot of times it is, especially I've had a, you know, a couple of fights where we went in with a game plan and um, we had to switch it like midway through the fight. Cause it wasn't working. You know, like I was trying to take him, uh, actually, uh, the Dom Steele fight was one of them. We were looking to take him down like right away and I got him on the ground, but I spent a lot of energy trying to get him on the ground and hold him on the ground. And in between the second and third round, we were like, okay, let's just try to stand a little more instead of trying to, you know, gas myself. And cause I, I kind of gassed myself out in the first round trying to go for the finish and, and get the takedown. So, um, you know, I, I just feel like sometimes you got to kind of make those mid fight adjustments, uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, like I said with Marcus, I wasn't expecting him really to try to take me down. Um, you know, he's a box. He has multiple boxing fights and kickboxing fights. And I thought for sure he'd want to stand with me. And my game plan with him was to keep my range, um, work the leg kicks. And, and uh, if the takedown presented itself, because he comes he comes forward really hard when he when he throws. So I was looking I was going to actually look to change levels on him and take him down. But you know, before I knew it, I was getting lifted in the air. <laughs> you know, I was, I was just thinking about this and I didn't, it wasn't really something I was going to bring up, but it just kind of came to my mind of, you know, thinking of what could be next for you. Any, yeah. uh, you know, cause as I, I'm pretty sure they, they said middleweights was going to be on the next season, the ultimate fighter. Is that, yeah. is that my of interest to you? So, oh yeah. So I, I put my application in for it. Um, unfortunately I didn't get a phone call, uh, for it. So I don't know, you know, I'm still crossing my fingers cause they still have a while before the show even starts recording and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, I hate to say this, but you know, hopefully one of them gets COVID or something and then can't go. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I messaged Jason, my manager and I said, listen, man, uh, I'm ready to go. Um, my weight's low. I had to do this one at a catch weight because he was coming down from heavyweight. He just fought, I think Josh Parisian in his last fight, uh, Marcus did. So he was, and with Thanksgiving, he asked if he could have a couple pounds. And so we did a catch weight at 195 and then he ended up showing up overweight. So we bumped it up to 200. Um, but I'm ready to, for, I'm ready to make 185 and man, I would love an opportunity to be on the ultimate fighter. I would, you know, I would leave right now if they called me and said, Hey, we need a 185 er out here and I'd go. So, um, I, there's definitely, there's nothing holding me back right now. <laughs> Any opportunity I get, uh, I would, I would jump on it in a heartbeat.
Yeah, because obviously with with what our world is and um there could be a lack of opportunities on the regional scene. I mean, just, and yeah, some of it's absolutely. based on where do you live? You know, are, are right. you, is your state allowing shows, whatnot? Like, like here in my home state of Florida, there's still a lot of opportunities because the Florida yeah. state boxing commission is allowing shows to go on. But like you mentioned about, you know, where you're up there in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I know in talking to Northeast fighters, it, it sounds like pretty much there's just the, the odds Not of like, I, the word I heard is they have to do an outside show. Well, who the hell is doing an outside show in the Northeast? Not in the wintertime. So the uh, OCL show, uh, the Ohio Combat League show, they did theirs in the inside. Uh, they were allowed 300 spectators. Um, and I think the way they had it all set up was like there was like six feet of um, spacing between all the chairs. And they did tables with a maximum of eight people, I think, at the table. So they were, were still meeting all the covid restrictions requirements but yeah um you know for months from what i was being told in ohio was you know if we if anyone was doing a show it was going to have to be outside um luckily ohio combat league found a venue that was big enough uh, um to fit that many spectators in with the cage and have spacing um i know they're waiting to hear uh back on the review from the commission and from the health department on whether or not they're going to be able to do more shows um, so that's kind of up in the air, but as far as the show on Saturday went, I mean, um, it was great. Uh, I, the fans had a great time. Um, I, I mean, obviously I won, so I had a good time. Uh, and yeah, I mean, everyone that I talked to that got the pay-per-view loved the fights and, uh, I think they put on a really good show. So I was excited and, you know, Ohio combat league was the last show to do a, a last promotion to do a show in Ohio and the first promotion to do a show in Ohio since COVID. So, um, you know, they're on top of their game. It also another thing made me think of is is talking about your manager Jason House of I'm guessing the conversation has come about of you know hey I know there's a lot of shows in Vegas I know there's 85ers yeah. on these cards just like just keep me in mind <laughs> so uh, you know like the fight um, have you heard about the fight game series they're doing the yeah. videos and stuff and, yeah okay so uh, he actually just started training and he just moved to Columbus and he was just out in Vegas and uh, he's like you know you need to just call your manager up bro, and tell him that you're coming to stay on his couch and then, and, and tell him you're, you're, you're coming to Vegas and you'll take a fight when he's ready. And I was like, you know, I might do that. So Jason, <laughs> Jason might be, might be getting a message from me soon and just say, Hey, uh, Hey, I'm coming to stay on your couch. I need a fight. So give me something. That's uh Trevin Jones who yeah. uh, li- lives in Guam. He had basically made the decision. He's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to be ready to go in case. And he got an opportunity. I mean, it's yeah. like it, it, it's for some fighters, maybe financially, it's not um, feasible for them to do that. But yeah. he made that decision of like, you know what? I'm just going to take a chance. And it worked out. Yeah, for uh, I, I would be lying if I said I'm not. I'm like teetering on the point where it's just like, you know, uh, with the opportunities and everything happening out in Vegas right now with them doing, you know, the shows with COVID and stuff. Yeah, I mean, if I can be there and they say that I need a 185er, I would jump on it in a heartbeat. So that's something me and Jason need to talk about and kind of uh, iron out and stuff. And, you know, I'd see if I can find somewhere to stay for, you know, a couple of weeks out there, a month or two and see how it's going. I, I can't, unfortunately, just uplift everything right now and and go out there or I, you know, or I would. I would. But with me owning my own business and stuff, it allows me the flexibility to leave for a month or two at a time and you know, go put that training in, go get the training out there and just be ready. If something comes up, I mean, uh, you know, Josh Fram, uh, who I fought a couple fights ago, man, he's had two or three fights now for LFA. And he just, I've, I've and I'm, me and him co- talk to each other now and stuff. And he was, uh, he's just like, yeah, man, they just, they needed a 185 or one of the guys had COVID and I, I'm out here and I'm like, God, and he's in Denver, but, uh, you know, he's with factory Muay Thai X mm-hmm. and I'm sure they have a good relationship with, uh, um, LFA and, you know, most of their shows LFA is doing is in like South Dakota and stuff, which is, you know, hop, skip away from Colorado. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I, I gotta, I gotta do something. I'm nine and four. I'm ready to go. I mean, I don't know what else I need to do, who else I need to be. Um, you know, even like I said, uh, my four losses are to guys who were either supposed to be in the UFC or headed to the UFC or have been to the UFC. So, I mean, I've, I've competed against UFC level guys. Um, I've beat some UFC level guys and I just, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go and, you know, make a name for myself finally and, and get the opportunity to beat the crap out of these guys on TV 
in the UFC in the 185 pound division and just let everyone know, like, I'm, you know, I'm here to fight. I mean, win or lose, um, you're going to be in a war when, when, when you fight me. And so, um, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make it there. And of course, congratulations on the victory here. Look, seeing uh, what, what comes from you in 2021, maybe it's the ultimate fighter. Who knows? Maybe it's a short notice UFC fight. Travis, man, as always, uh, appreciate the time. Of course, uh, let me know anything you find on social media and anything else you want to mention, man. Uh, yeah, no, just a huge shout out to all my sponsors, my management team, um, and my fans and everyone who supports me, you know, it's, uh, it's been a long road this year, but, uh, I'm ready for, I'm ready for the opportunities in 2021, whether it be the UFC or I just got to get another regional fight in before they take me. So it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, obviously I would love to be on the ultimate fighter or, you know, short notice fight either way. I'm down.